Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on this video. Today we're going to be looking at multiplicity of zeros of polynomials. If you want to follow along, the links to the companion worksheet are in the description below. Also don't forget to click that subscribe button to stay up to date on all the videos we have coming out from the channel. Alright, so when we talk about multiplicity, we off what that means is we talk about how often a zero repeats itself. Now how do we know what that is? Well let's look at number one. What are the zeros? What makes this zero? That's going to be the number x equals zero. But because it's squared, it's really x times x. So it actually shows up twice. So what we say is this has a multiplicity of two because that's how often it repeats. For this one, x minus two, the value x equals two is what makes that zero. But this repeats itself three times. So that means this has a multiplicity of three. And so here we ask what makes this zero? That's going to be x equals two fifths. And this repeats itself four times. So this has a multiplicity of four. So however many times this same identical factor reappears, that's the multiplicity of the zero. So let's look at number two. Now this one we have to factor. So this one is f of x equals, now we can take out two x squared out. And when we do, we're left with x squared minus 16. And that can factor into 2x squared, x minus 4, and x plus 4. So what we have is what makes this 0? x equals 0. And that has a multiplicity of 2. This one, we have x equals 4 is what makes that 0. And so this has a multiplicity of 1. Now oftentimes some books, some teachers won't have you sit, give multiplicity unless it's more than 1. So it's really up to your teacher or the book that you're learning from. So here, this only shows up once, so that also has a multiplicity of 1. Number 3. Here, this is in factored form, but we've got this weird 2 plus radical 3. And so we need to rewrite this because we want it as x minus a quantity. Now it is to the 6, but we'll get to that. So what's inside the parentheses? Well, it has to be 2 minus radical 3, because that negative distributes in. It's going to apply to here and to here. So that means x equals 1 is a 0 with a multiplicity of 1. And then we have x equals 2 minus radical 3 with a multiplicity of 6. Okay. Now for number four, here we have a graph. We want to state the zeros and their multiplicities. So we have three locations where this graph touches the x-axis. x equals negative four, x equals negative two, and x equals three. Now when it touches the x-axis like this, it mimics an x-squared graph, which means this has a multiplicity of two. Whereas when it crosses through the x-axis at negative 4 and negative 2, these are multiplicities of 1. So with number 5, here we've got three locations, negative 2, 1, and 4. Negative 2, 1, and 4. So at negative 2, like we saw above, this looks like x squared. So this has a multiplicity of 2. At 1, it just crosses through, so this has a multiplicity of 1. Now at 4, this mimics an x cubed graph. So that means this has a multiplicity of 3. So anytime it mimics an x squared graph when it touches the x-axis, it's going to have a multiplicity of 2. Here, when it mimics the x cubed graph, it's going to have a multiplicity of 3. Number 6, we want to write a factored polynomial equation with degree 9, whose zeros are negative 2, 0, and 1, with multiplicities of 2, 4, and 1. Now actually, that's a mistake. That should actually be degree 7, and I'll explain why. Because that means we're going to have x plus 2 times x minus 0 
times x minus 1. So there is f of x. Now we don't have to expand this out because it says write a factored. But the multiplicities are 2 for this one, 4 for this one, and 1 for that. So that means x plus 2 quantity squared, x minus 0 to the 4th, and x minus 1 to the 1st. Now we can simplify this a little bit by just writing x to the 4th. And here, x minus 1, we don't need the 1 power. And the reason that it's to the 7th is because if you take all the zeros and add up their multiplicities, all their multiplicities should add up to the degree. So I should have put a 7 there because we have 2 plus 4 plus 1. Now with number 7, we want to write a factored polynomial equation with degree 9, whose zeros are 3, 0, and negative 1 fourth. So here we have, we're going to have x minus 3, we're going to have x, and we're going to have 4x plus 1. Now, it says degree 9, but it doesn't give what the individual multiplicities have to be. But like I said, whatever the multiplicities are, they have to add up to 9. So, I can say something like 5, 2, and 2. Now, is that the only right answer? No. Just as long as these three distribute so that they add up to 9, that's going to give us a function that fits this criteria. All right. So number 8. Use the zeros in the multiplicities to sketch this graph. So what we have is we have three zeros at 1, at 4 thirds, and at negative 5. So let's draw negative 5. 1 and 4 thirds. All right, so at these three points, the graph is going to touch the x-axis. But they each have individual multiplicities. At 1, it's going to touch like x squared. It's going to hit and it's going to bounce off. At 3x minus 4 to the third, it's going to hit like x cubed. And then at x plus 5, it's going to just cross right through. Now, one thing to notice. What's the leading coefficient? Is it positive or is it negative? Well, let's quick remind ourselves. Take x squared, 3x cubed, and x. So this is x squared, this is 27x cubed, and this is x. So when we multiply all this together, we get 27x to the sixth. We have a leading coefficient that's positive, which means our graph should end up going positive. So when we sketch this, we actually kind of sketch it going backwards. So when it touches at 4 thirds, it's going to look like x cubed. So it's going to flatten out and then go down. Then when it touches 1, it hits like x squared, so it's going to bounce off. And then finally, it's going to touch x to the uh, at negative 5 and then pass right through. So here's a rough sketch of what this graph looks like. Again, I don't label the y-axis because that is really not important right now. What's important is where it touches the x-axis and what it looks like when it does. So with number 9, we want to sketch this one. So first we need to factor it. So we take out x squared, whoops, sorry, x to the fifth, leaving x squared plus 4x plus 4. And so that factors into x plus 2 and x plus 2. So we have x plus 2 quantity squared. So this is going to touch the x-axis in two places, at 0 and at negative 2. Now what is the leading coefficient? Leading coefficient is 1. So that means it's going to end up going positive. So when it touches at 0, it's going to look like have a multiplicity of 5. Now odd multiplicities are all the same. Whether it's a 3, 5, 7, they're all going to be the same. So that means this is going to look like x cubed. And then at x plus 2 quantity squared, it's going to look like x squared. It's going to bounce off. Now the only difference between x cubed and x to the 5th and x to the 7th is how steeply it comes down and hits. So there is a slight difference between them, but since we're just sketching them, that difference isn't that important right now. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have suggestions or problems you want to see worked out, type a comment below. 
To support the channel, click the Patreon link to help keep this going. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, the best way to understand something is to do it.